Campaign tagging, part two. For a refresher on how to set up campaign tagging, make sure you check out our first video. Here are five quick tips to keep in mind before you start using campaign tagging for your URLs. Number one, use consistent naming conventions. So if some people on your team are capitalizing the word email and some are using lowercase, it's going to show up as two different lines in your Google Analytics reports. So you want to make sure that you're consistent across the board so things are grouped together nicely within Google Analytics. Number two, don't tag everything. Make sure you know what's tracked by default within Google Analytics and what you'll need special campaign tagging for. Number three, don't use campaign tagging within your site. If you want to see how someone's moving from one page of your site to another, you can already see that in analytics using previous page path and next page path. And if you use campaign tagging, you'll overwrite that person's original source. So if someone came from Facebook ads, that will be wiped out and you'll lose that data when you add new campaign tagging. You can use event tracking instead. Number four. Campaign tagged URLs can be really long and lofty, and people aren't super likely to click long URLs. Use a tool like Bitly to create cuter, shorter URLs that people will be more likely to click. And you'll also want to embed things whenever you can. So hopefully you're never exposing your users to long, clunky URLs. You're embedding and hyperlinking text instead. Last tip, you can use the plus sign to create spaces in Google Analytics reports. So if you want to use the campaign name Giving Tuesday, in your campaign tagged URL, use Giving Plus Tuesday. And this will show up as two words, Giving Tuesday, in your reports. And here we are in Google Analytics. Hopefully this looks a little familiar to you. I hope you're all using Google Analytics. If not, check out tons of other great videos we have on our site that will teach you all about it. Uh, so, we're going to dig into how to find out how your different tagged campaigns are doing using Google Analytics. First, I want to start by talking about which campaigns we're actually going to be looking at. Here's a little map of what we're going to be looking at today in Whole Whale's account. So this is an example of a Pinterest CPC, a cost per click. So this is a Pinterest ad campaign. And as you can see, we ran three different campaigns with five different ads. So you can see each campaign was tagged differently. We had one that we ran at the beginning of July, one that we called to July that we ran halfway through the month, and then another one that we ran in August. And in the second half of July and in August, we wanted to test two different types of ads against each other. One was about SEO and one was about AdWords. So that's why we used the content bucket to tag these two differently. Now we're going to look at how to find these campaigns in Google Analytics. So I'm going to start by going under the acquisition tab on the left to all traffic. And then I'm going to look at source medium. This is a great report because you can see all the different sources of traffic to your website and how they compare. I'm going to look for Pinterest CPC. If I didn't find it in this list, I could use this search box to find it. And I'm going to click into Pinterest CPC. So now I'm looking only at Pinterest CPC traffic. So you can see July and August is when these ads were running. I want to look at this by campaign. I don't want to just see one listing for all the Pinterest CPC traffic. So I'm going to change this primary dimension here to campaign. So this is a really easy way to break it down by campaign because I'm, as I can see at the top, I know that I'm only looking at Pinterest CPC traffic. So this allows me to dial in a little bit deeper by changing this primary dimension. So now you can see those three different campaigns we talked about. July, the second July campaign, and August. You can see how much traffic they each brought in. You can see the bounce rate and how that differed from the different campaigns. And most importantly, you can see how they drove different goal conversions. So for instance, one of our goals at Whole Whale is to get people to stay on our site for longer than five minutes. You are helping us do that right now by watching this video on our site, hopefully. So what do you see when we look at this campaign? 
the July campaign was way better than the August or the halfway through July campaign at driving interested users, people staying longer than five minutes. Not only in the raw number of people who did that, but in the conversion rate. So the number of people who stayed longer than five minutes divided by the total number of people. Let's say we wanna learn a little bit more about which ads actually did better. We're gonna add a secondary dimension to this report called content. So remember how we use the content bucket to differentiate these two different types of ads. In Google Analytics, you use ad content, and this is how you tie these together. So we can add this as a secondary dimension. What that does is that slices the same data up by a different dimension. So it adds, not only are we looking at campaigns, but we're also looking at the different ad content each campaign had. So you can see we had only one ad in July. We didn't use this bucket for that campaign. We had, in August, we had an SEO ad and we had an AdWords ad. And halfway through July, we had an SEO ad and an AdWords ad. Now we can get even more granular data about how these different ads performed. For instance, I can see that the SEO ad in both halfway through July and in August brought in a lot more traffic than this AdWords ad. So for whatever reason, this one just did not do as well. Of course, we also wanna look at conversion rate. Let's change this to all goals. So now we're adding up all the different goals we're tracking on Whole Whale's site. And when we look at conversion rate, we can see, even though it didn't bring in a ton of traffic, this AdWords ad had one of the highest conversion rates for our different goals. Granted, we're not looking at huge numbers here, but this allows us to say, maybe we should invest a little bit more in this ad and see where it takes us. So there you go. That is how to check out your campaigns using Google Analytics. That was how to use Google Analytics to find the ROI of your marketing campaigns. Now go forth and get tagging and make sure you subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos.